Hey guys, welcome to the snowy flat world. Um, I'm gonna do something a little different. I did start a Minecraft playthrough, but I started another one with some friends online. And, well, that one is taking priority, I guess. You know, I'm gonna spend more time on that. So, kind of abandoned that survival. So I'm probably, um, I'm just gonna start this. I was inspired because, well. You know, a lot of people use redstone or know what redstone is, but they don't really understand the uh, applications behind it. So, you know, people will build machines that they see on YouTube, but they don't really know how they work. They just sort of build them, and everything happens. So what I'm going to do is go over some basics of redstone. Uh, at least as far as I know, things may have changed uh, in the years that I haven't been playing this. This is Minecraft 1.15, I believe, so things might be different. Either way, I'm going to go over what I know, and basically, the whole purpose behind redstone is to pass a signal from one point to another. And the redstone machines can activate using those signals. So you, you have a few different machines. This is just a sticky piston, just to show it. Um, the sticky piston can be used to push <clears throat> can be used to push blocks around so and put and pull them back in. So that sticky piston can push oops, that's the wrong thing. The sticky piston can push that block up, and then when it loses the signal, it can pull it back in. Basically the keys to redstone are signal source and controlling that signal. Uh, there are some other applications where signal strength comes into play when you start using a comparator. In that case, signal strength actually does play an important role. But for the most part, uh, as long as you are within, I think it's within seven blocks of a repeater. Uh, that's three, four, five, six, seven. So there's seven blocks between this source and that. As long as you're, as long as there's seven blocks between your signal source and the object you're trying to activate, then it should work. See, I go, I put eight blocks between, I send this out. Oh, or is it 15? I it was, oh, seven is water. That's right, so eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So you have 15 and it works. You go to 16 and it doesn't work. So 15, it still passes the signal. Once you go to 16, oh Jesus, once you go to 16, well now there's too much redstone here, the signal doesn't pass. You can see that this is now dead. It's not, it's not bubbling like the rest of it. So I guess that's your first lesson in redstone is as long redstone signal only passes through 15 uh, redstone blocks or redstone dust trail things here. So I could branch this off. So you see this is out, this is 15, 14, 13. So the same thing applies here. You can see that uh, the 14th and the 15th still work. Now I could take, I could come back here and this would be uh, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. So I can do 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and still works, and the 16th doesn't. Uh, you can go straight out, and then the 16th doesn't come on. Uh, you can, one, two, three, oh, that one already didn't work. So you can do it in all different ways. There's, what's interesting about redstone versus is, uh, electricity, per se, is that the power, aka the redstone signal, doesn't split and weaken. Uh, so in normal electricity, let's say you branch off here, you have 10 volts or 10 amps running through here, uh, they're going to split. And you'll have 5 amps going through this way and this way, assuming that the resistance is the same in both branches. Um, voltage now will be the same across here. So that's what we're really dealing with in redstone is voltage and it's signal source. You're not dealing with current, so you're not trying to do work with current, you're essentially just trying to pass a signal and tell something. Uh, so the redstone itself isn't actually um,
powering this. This has redstone in it, I guess it's powering it. All the redstone is doing is passing a signal to it to activate. So that's a, a key thing you got to grasp uh, in the redstone world, is you're not actually passing power, you're passing a signal to activate. And uh, that's done similar, similarly to uh, voltage in the real world, uh, and the fact that voltage sort of exists everywhere in a circuit. Um, the only difference is this redstone has a very limited capacity or limited length. And, I mean, voltage does too. That's it's one of the reasons why we run AC voltage through our power lines in the real world is because it actually has more range on it. A lot more range and it doesn't dissipate down as the resistance of the wire increases because wire does have resistance even though it's very small. And uh, the more wire you put together, the long, larger the resistance is, aka larger the voltage drop. Okay, so now we know uh, this redstone signal passes over 15 blocks. Okay, well, what if we want uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I'm going to add one in right here. So I'm going to put redstone in here. What if this is our redstone path? We need to power that piston from this point. And that's the only way we can get there. So I put this in. We can see it's not working. Right? You can see it's not working. And you can see that this is the 15th point. The, the, yeah, the 15th block in the path. So we need three more blocks out of that. There are a couple ways you can do that and uh, it's done using a repeater, a redstone repeater. So these are what we use to extend the signal and all it does is it restarts the signal. So um, if you have a redstone repeater, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, actually I think that's 14, 15, we'll just go out a few. Uh, actually, I'm going to do this. Okay, so if we have a redstone path like this, you can see this is the 15th. Uh, so I'm going to actually cross it over here. So that's the 15th, this is the 16th block. Now, What happens with the redstone signal? So we have our power source. It, pa it travels over, or our power or our signal source, I should say, not power source. It travels over 15 blocks, and the 16th one has no signal. You put in a redstone repeater here, and this block, this, just like uh, the, um, just like the piston, this last 15th redstone dust will power this repeater, and that repeater does exactly what you think it does and it repeats the signal. So it takes this weakened signal and bumps it up and uh, it comes out full power on the other side or full strength on the other side. So now from the repeater it goes another 15 blocks and the 16th one is dead. So the repeater acts just like a torch except if I were to put a torch here uh, now this torch is also providing a signal so um, if I were to take this signal away, for instance, uh, we can see here, see here this piston is being powered by that torch. If I took that torch away, well, that torch is still providing the signal. So maybe I, if I want to control the piston from here, I can't use a torch there. I could if I started from this side. So what I do is I put a repeater there, and without a redstone signal, that repeater is not powered. Then I put a torch in, and then it passes the signal all the way through. Like I said, uh, most of redstone is just controlling that signal and uh, getting it to where you need it to go. So back to this. So this torch is sending out a 15 block signal, or, or a signal that's 15 blocks away, and we need to get it. Uh, to this piston. So yeah, there's a couple things 
we cannot do with repeaters. So starting here with this uh, torch, we cannot put a repeater like this, run redstone into it, and then pass the signal out the other side. The redstone has to hit the back of the repeater. That's just a has to, that's how it works. Um, so there's two ways to get around that. You can rearrange your signal so that the reds, or you can rearrange your redstone so that the reds, you're being efficient and not losing uh, any redstone range. But there are other ways around it, and we will we'll, we'll go over those at a later date when we start going over gates and uh, other ways to control uh, the signal through logic. But anyway, back to our original original uh, example here. So this is our 15th block. It's powered. So this means we can't just do this. We can't do that, it's not going to power it. So what we have to do is sacrifice one length on our redstone and put a repeater in. And now that will repeat it and get the signal there. Not too shabby. Um, one consequence of a repeater, and this is a little more advanced and we'll go over it in a little more detail, is that it actually takes time to repeat the signal. Uh, so for example, if I were to put this piston here, so I'm going to do it like that, and that piston there, and I will do redstone here and redstone here, and then I will put just a series of repeaters, just repeaters. And then I will do just redstone on this side. Now if I put a torch right here, you see that the one on the right goes up first and it goes down first. Now this can be useful in certain applications. So a repeater actually, I think it's one tick by default, and if you right click this little knob, you add a tick, two, three, and then four. So it's four ticks, that's the longest it can go. So um, basically that means, and I think on the fourth tick you can actually see the signal get delayed. So you have this one tick, we send that signal. You don't really notice a difference because that one tick's pretty fast. Well, let's bring it out a little more for two ticks. Now you saw a little bit of a difference. Three ticks. A little bit of a difference. Four ticks, and you should be able to see this one pretty good. Yeah, so four ticks. And that's essentially it's the timekeeping unit in Minecraft for the uh, actual computer architecture and um, or software architecture. And uh, so that's how it counts its time, and that repeater actually takes advantage of that count to delay the signal if you need to. This can be used for making clocks, and you can change the, the uh, precision of those clocks based on uh, how many ticks you set it for. Uh, a simple clock that you can play around with in your world is this one. And let's say we set four ticks on each side for a total of, uh, let's say, four ticks to pass this way, four ticks to pass this way, and then uh, pass out a signal. So what we'll do is we'll put a block here, and uh, you'll, you'll understand why this is a clock pretty quickly. So what I'm going to do is just put a torch in here, and then cut the torch. Oh, I need to put the block farther away. You can see how it's pulsing back and forth. That's just counting um, 16 ticks. It actually looks like it's only counting 8 ticks because of the way it's going. Um, technically, I could add in another one here when it's dark. And now it's adding in even more ticks. It's going slower. And then do the same thing on this side. And you can see how it's slowed right down. Yeah, so there's a basic clock, so there's a little piece of knowledge for you. And I went over a little bit of the basics of redstone. We'll go over, we'll start going into uh, gates and how to control the signal a little bit more next time. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.